Hey everyone, welcome back to Automation. So this week is a special one because I'm going to be making a car with no brakes, or at least as close to no brakes as we can possibly get. In my car manager, I have a absolute mound of uh, showcase cars, which I have not yet checked out. So if you see yours in here, as of recording this, is untested, but today we're gonna make something brand new. So you've probably noticed lately I've been on a bit of an off-road kick. Today we're gonna be going back on-road and I'm going to attempt to make something ridiculously fast with an immediate absence of brakes. Uh, because I'm curious to see if we can make something go around the track at speed and yet still have no stopping power. It's gonna be a very interesting balance between things. That being said, I'm gonna have a fun time with this. So something that I don't often allude to on this channel is the tech pool. Mine is currently set to zero. I guess that's how it comes default, but you can see everything here is plus five. I believe these can go as high as 15. So we're gonna give myself every possible option that we can in the game by raising this for both the engine and the car technology. There we go, that's plus 15 quality and plus 15 sandbox tech pool. That is as good as we can get carbon fiber monocoque uh, carbon fiber again, <laughs> mid longitudinal engine, push rod and push rod. Let's see if that does something cool. And yes, I have chosen a pretty ridiculous looking prototype race car because I don't know. This thing just needs to be cool. It's been an age since I maxed out a V16, so that's exactly what I'm going to do today. Massive cancel to that because the length of it is too much. Let's try V10. Okay, maximum sized V10 is no problem. V12. No problem either. Hmm, okay. <laughs> we're down four cylinders, but V12 max is what we're going to be doing. 16.3 liters of fury. And we have to go here to the sandbox tech pool for engines, and once again, raise it to the highest to get the best stuff that I can get. My goal here is to make an engine that is beyond ridiculous, and I'm hopeful that uh, <laughs> this lives up to that expectation, because you know I can do things like quad turbos in this game. No superchargers yet, but the dream, I know. Man, it's been it's such a long time since I just like went all out, so <laughs> I'm feeling it today. Now, fuel is actually a big thing. Uh, it, it changes <laughs> quite a lot these days. The highest RON being compressed gas is not actually the best uh, curve, and I believe methanol is the best? So we're gonna try that, or maybe nitromethane. I'm gonna have to go through a couple of these to see which one is truly the best. For now, we'll stick with methanol. So right off the hop, quad turbos, this boy makes 1900 horsepower. I believe we can do a lot better than that. Tune it for power, please, and thank you, OAI of the future. 3666 with our current setup, and then if we go turbo and we hit race, it should go quite a bit higher than that. Actually, it went down. <laughs> okay, uh, back to the AI tune again. This is really just a good place to start. Like, I wouldn't suggest running an AI tune and actually going with it. Okay, 37, not bad. Our compressor is extremely restrictive, but everything else is looking fine. The AI tune does not let any stress happen from what I can tell, so it keeps it pretty safe. Now, if we were going for just all-out beastly power, then the easiest way to do that is just kind of to turn all this stuff up, <laughs> make the compressor huge, make the turbine huge, turn up the air ratio, and basically crank the boost. It's 17 PSI right now, and the more that you give it at the moment, we actually lose power, funnily enough. But that's just because our compressor is so ridiculously restrictive. Increasing the size of that is going to make things weird. As you can see, I hit it three times, and now our curve looks like this. Once back, and uh, now we have 3,800 horsepower, so a little bit better than the AI tune. You basically just have to go like that, back and forth, over and over again, until it works. So we're at a pretty low RPM there. I was able to get a lot more by increasing the springs and lifters. Our pistons and conrods can only go up to 7,500, so we actually are pretty significantly limited by that, unfortunately. Uh, this is, again, running on methanol. Let's see what happens if I switch to nitromethane. Okay, it immediately breaks. That's not a good sign. <laughs> Back to methanol it is. 4890, that's, that's a lot of power. Okay, I want to show you something, and it's just the power of boost, basically. Our turbos are all maximum sized, which means they're 
huge uh, and basically I want you to watch the power number it's right here but it's controlled by my mouse currently 4209 just just watch this oh yes 6k just like that going from 10 psi to 32.63 psi we went from 4200 horsepower to 6600 horsepower that's 6591.4 horses absolutely insane Unfortunately, all of our stuff here is going to want to jump out of the block, but that's where things get fun <laughs> and also destructive very, very quickly. I think I'm going to cap myself here at, uh, let's not go too high. Let's do 65. No, you know what? We're probably safe at 6,600 horsepower, somewhere around there. Okay, a little bit of advancing of the timing. A little bit of manifold shaping, and I think 7,000 is probably good. Oh my goodness. Okay, 7,000 even, 8,000 torque. I'm not going to touch it even more. You can do a lot more power with an engine like this, and I'm curious to hear what your numbers are in the latest version of automation. That's 4.27. How much power can you get out of a V12 these days? Come on and beat me. <laughs> I know it's easy to do. Okay, I'm going to skip through because we need to get to the brakes. Uh, just to show you what I'm actually going to be doing here, I'm going to go for... Well, I was going to go manual, but I think I'll go dual clutch 10 speed because what we can do is we can downshift in order to brake. And the more speeds that we have, the more control we have theoretically over that. I'm going to try this. It might be a failure. Okay, so here's where we make some uh, considerations, because it isn't possible to actually just straight up have no brakes. Uh, <laughs> that's part of the issue, I guess, with this game. I mean, I could probably edit them out with J-Beam, um, but we can have the equivalent of no brakes by just removing the size of the brakes. So say I went one piston carbon ceramic discs, and I made them extremely small uh, with the brake force at 50, and that means and 20 at the back, which basically means they're going to be extremely uh, undersized for this application. Okay, this is a good start. I've basically run through everything we have. Uh, the brakes suffer from severe brake fade, and <laughs> that's a good start. Uh, front brake force is low, rear brake force is low. Beautiful. Back to the brakes chart. <laughs> Braking at max load is negative 43.9%. Let's try drum brakes. Oh, it doesn't like it, but yeah, that's even worse. So, okay, drum brakes it is. Drum brakes on the back as well. Yep, worse. Well, uh, let's go comfort pads. That's going to be even worse. Yep. So there you have it. That's my no brakes setup. Uh, basically, we have drum brakes in the front and the back. They are as small as they can possibly be with the lowest force that they can possibly have and the worst pads that they can possibly have. Uh, and also the worst quality. So negative 50%. I think that's the only time I've ever seen a number that bad before. Wow. Well, I'm going to take a bit of time, design this thing up, and finish off the rest of the build. And then we got to take this into BeamNG Drive. Okay, this is already getting too much work into it, but <laughs> I've come up with a bit of a design. The engine is sticking out the back considerably, and it's extremely cool to see a V12 hanging out like that. We're not gonna have any fixtures, we're just gonna have pure paint basically filling in the gaps and the body itself. I think it looks really cool. It's subtle, it's nice, it's definitely something that I can tune in the future to be a ridiculous land speed car. Hint, hint, wink, wink, maybe next week. Uh, let's get into the rest of the stuff. So maximum top speed at the moment is only 565, unfortunately. I think we can probably raise that or change that with different gearing. Um, but this is going to have to be fine. Wheel spin is present in pretty much every instance because it has 7,000 horsepower. That's even with an LSD and a good weight distribution balance. It's still pretty much ridiculous. Um, I'm curious to see how this goes. It's going to be a lot of fun though. Uh, so all this stuff is pretty much set. I think everything here with the brakes is good in its own way. Uh, I went for flow optimized stuff. I hope that works out well for us. We have no wings at all, which is probably a bad idea. Actually, let me go back and add some wings because this just ain't going to work without it. There we go. Now we have a wing, although that needs to be placed in just a little bit further. It, there we go. <laughs> okay, perfect. Wing on the back, splitter on the front, nice and simple. We have two fixtures on this entire car, 
and I hope that's enough to uh, give it a at least a little bit of aerodynamic stuff to mess with, and thankfully, yes. So this is us making uplift at high speeds, which is great. Uh, that basically just means that we're going to be flying. Um, <laughs> this is an airplane now. Yeah, honestly, this is the best setup at the moment. 100 on the front, 50 on the back. We need like 20 more wings to make this thing work. Or possibly a race diffuser, which will give us a lot more downforce. That might actually be the best call for this car. Okay, thank goodness we actually have downforce now. All right, a little bit of the suspension tuning later, and it's time for the help, no brakes, to attempt the uh, BeamNG circuits. I'm very, very curious to see what this thing is going to do. It is going to be so fast, but it will not stop. <laughs> How am I going to get it around a track? So this is the car in BeamNG, the help, no brakes uh, vehicle is definitely living up to its name after a very uh, quick test run. You can see what my prints look like over there. Basically, I put a little graph there above the airspeed meter so that you can see how much I'm pushing the throttle and how much I'm pushing the brakes and clutch and all that stuff. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness. And then see if I hold down the brakes all the way. Uh, it doesn't actually do anything as predicted. I mean, we're slowing down. I wonder if the parking brake actually works. I think the answer to that is no, I'm holding it down, it's not doing anything. Oh my goodness, this car would be fast if it could get any traction. <laughs> Hold on, let's try it on the drag strip just for fun. Okay, I'm gonna go sport mode, ESC is still uh, in off position, <laughs> which is the reason that we're spinning so much. Let's, uh, I'm not even gonna rev it up, let's just go. Wow, I don't know what to say about that. It's definitely fast, but the ESC, or the, the transmission, I should say, hangs on the gears because it doesn't know when to shift it due to the wheel spin, and I'm honestly not sure that I'd be able to shift it better myself. Like, this thing needs 20 wings to have enough downforce to compensate for that 7,000 horsepower V12 in the back. If I turn on ESC and we attempt to deal with some of the wheel spin issues, uh, it hesitates like crazy, but just driving it around normally, I mean, this is a big open area, so it's not too, too bad. <laughs> oh man, I'm glad I made this all-wheel drive. I would not be able to do anything with it if it wasn't. So I found a really nice setting in the BeamNG menus. You can go here to Vehicle Config, you can go Tuning, scroll down past all this fun stuff, and then you see Brakes and Power. Uh, which I can then turn down a further 50%, meaning that once again, we got no brakes. I'm also going to increase the tire pressure to like 40. Whoops. <laughs> I'll do that again. Okay, so this is with the brakes set to 50% in BeamNG as well as automation. And with the ESC off. <laughs> and I'm going to try my best to make something happen here. The car keeps shutting off. I'm going to turn it on again. There we go, buddy. Okay. And then just roll into it. We're here on the automation test track, which is gonna be an interesting place to run this car and I figured while we oh my goodness um, the only way to get around here with any speed is gonna be being able to uh, slow down for the corners okay so with the good handling of this car we can come around some of these corners at speed but honestly this car just kind of feels like you're driving on ice like 89% of the time as you can see Okay, I'm giving myself a tiny bit of a handicap. I'm using the Sport ESC to try and help me get through some of these corners without spinning. And I'm going to stick the car in like fifth, maybe, because otherwise you'll get too much power down too quick. And then you just slide out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it also has really bad uh, <laughs> issues with... Oh my goodness. Everything. Literally everything has problems. See, corners like this are where I think the struggle is the most real. You can see I had the brakes on all the way there and I couldn't do much. <laughs> I guess I could just drift. Well, I mean, drifting is easier when you initiate with a brake. Oh my goodness! Well, there goes the splitter. We'll take the short version of the track for the sake of not dying immediately. You know, this isn't actually that bad. Um, the car has enough power to go its own way, and because it feels like you're driving on ice, it's pretty easy to just spin the wheels and kind of move in the direction that you want to go, which is kind of interesting. 
somehow I've made a car that it isn't too bad without having any brakes. Keeping in mind that I'm traveling on this track at 140 kilometers an hour, which is not really that good considering I have 7,000 horsepower and I should be going a lot faster. But you can see in a situation like that, you have to really slow down at the beginning of the, the run there in order to actually get around the corner. Basically, I have to go around the track entirely on momentum and hope that uh, when I get to the corner that I'm trying to get to, I have enough speed to go around it, but not too much that I fly over it. So I'm going to try out my manual mode idea where I'm basically just going to drive uh, in sort of a higher gear, let's say gear 5 again, and then anytime I need to downshift to lose speed, I spin out immediately. <laughs> Okay, this is the 4% throttle here, literally going as slow as I reasonably can. We're taking the long section of the track just to see what it does. Oh, no! <sighs> this car is my nemesis. As I'm driving this car absolutely wildly, I just thought about something. You can literally remove the brakes in BeamNG, on BeamNG's own vehicles, and I'm kind of curious to see what that looks like, so hold on with me a moment as we experiment with some other cars. Alright, so this is a fast car in BeamNG, I actually haven't driven it yet, it's one of the newer vehicles, uh, and I believe I'm set to, wait, what am I set to? Okay, this thing has a million traction modes, but I'm just gonna go, uh, course, I guess? And we'll see what it does with this Sport DCT. Um, wow, crazy fast. <laughs> Man, I probably should have picked this for my daily instead of that big off-roader. <laughs> I've made more mistakes than I thought this year. But, as you can probably imagine, this car actually has brakes. And when you hold them down, you actually stop. You can see them in there. Nice big rotors. Well, what happens if we take those away? Go into the vehicle config, go into tuning. Uh, and we can take away the brakes this way, or probably the best way is chassis. Okay, down to the subframes, down to the suspension, uh, hubs, and brakes, we can just go... No. Nah, I don't want brakes. Brakes are optional. And now we got nothing in there. Same thing on the front, go down here, and... Nah, I don't want brakes. Brakes are optional. Brakes suck. Let's see what happens with this car. Um... I'm going to unpause. <laughs> no brakes at all! Okay, this was definitely worth it. Okay, let's see what it looks like in a car that is also fast, but theoretically at least a little bit more drivable, I guess? Okay, I'm going on the track. I'm currently in the reverse uh, direction. I've just realized, again, these don't do anything, so I have to do this again strictly on momentum and downshifts. It's actually not too bad. I'm not suffering too much on these larger corners. I'm able to do a lot more speed than that other car. Oh, wow, I'm over-revving like crazy. Um, but I'm using the clutch, essentially, to brake. Fifth gear manual mode, we're still ripping pretty darn hard. I'm gonna have to gradually slow. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> That's too much speed. Hard! <laughs> oh, yikes. Well then, whoopsie. Yeah, one of the funniest parts of this no brakes situation is that uh, <laughs> it's very hard to stop, as you can imagine. I'm going to downshift again. Oh no, oh no. Oh, you got to go wide. You got to go really wide to make those turns. I'm curious now. This is very easy to do with a sports car. And then the faster you go, the more dangerous it gets. What about a really slow car? This is a Moonhawk. This is the basic version with a, an inline six, and uh, it does have a manual transmission. Straight up manual, nothing crazy going on like the last time. Uh, I'm just gonna go here all the way to the front suspension. Disc brakes, nah, girl, we don't need those. And on the back, again, drum brakes, nah, don't need those. <laughs> Let's see what this does. So this car should be fairly competent. It's not gonna be fast, but Oh wow, I'm over revving it. I just wanted to make sure that the brakes weren't working there. <laughs> Otherwise my challenge is a bit of a failure. This isn't even really a challenge, it's more just an experiment. Like, it, I guess I was just thinking that it would be fun. 
Hopefully you're finding it fun. Now I've gone ahead and done too much speed and we're already having issues handling. Okay, car, come on. Oh no. Down into first. And around this chicane. I'm native, I'm like I'm naturally hitting the brakes, but it's not necessary. Again, <laughs> it's just for funsies. Okay, well, we've already over revved the engine here. Uh, thankfully, this car is heavy and it drops in RPM quick, and I'm going the wrong way. This is the short track. Doesn't seem to matter. I had too much speed. I want to hit that chicane again, this time with a little bit more oomph. Uh, over rev risk. <laughs> I revved her too hard. I don't know where the red line is. Oh, okay, I can see where that is, but where's the actual well <laughs> valve train damage? I guess I found out. Come on, you're in first. Get some speed going. Nah, the valve train damage is too much. This thing's screwed. Okay, I'm back on the proper way to go around the track here. I just want to see what it's like to round some of these faster corners. I'm gonna go down into second. I'm holding the brakes instinctively, but it's not enough. Come on, we gotta have to. We're gonna have to do a drift. <laughs> well, I mean, I made it. You know, I kind of bet that just due to the uncontrollable nature of that other car that I created in automation, this car, this Moonhawk, is faster around this track without any brakes than the uh, 7,000 horsepower uh, all-wheel drive beast all made out of carbon fiber that I created. Really, what have we learned from this experiment? Uh, basically nothing. I mean, brakes are obviously very necessary when you're trying to go fast on a track, but <laughs> I don't know. Oh, this is literally a three-speed. We got no other gears. <laughs> um, that's unfortunate. Basically what I've learned is that I could have done this entirely in BeamNG and not involved automation at all. <laughs> That's okay though. Maybe we can try that for another day uh, just to kind of see how it goes. But coming up to a corner, I am curious to see if I can round it. Might have to drop into first. Oh no, second. Second is plenty. Easy. No brakes needed. You know, I was just thinking about this more and I definitely rely on brakes too much when I'm doing any kind of driving and racing in these types of games. Uh, oh, no, I need first, I need first. <laughs> well, that sucks. And this might be a good way to practice running things exclusively with momentum. And I'm curious to see if anybody has actually done this before as practice for that very reason. Like, I'm definitely somebody who hounds brakes way too hard. And you can see my shifting is <laughs> needing a little bit of love as well, my goodness. But that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, just so you know, there is a link to BeamNG in the description that is for the Humble Store. And uh, I am partnered with the Humble Store, so that is an affiliate link. You're going to be seeing it uh, so, well, pretty much uh, everywhere <laughs> And now that I am partnered with the Humble Bundle. Um, don't worry, though. I really like the Humble Bundle. And uh, as with all my sort of partnerships and sponsorships and such. I thought about this one quite a lot and I buy stuff from the Humble Bundle fairly often. I really like some of the bundles they have. Some of the racing game bundles in particular are an excellent way to get a lot of games for only like 20-30 bucks. It's just great. So I'll be linking that stuff and I'll be talking about it just so you know a bit of a heads up. Basically every purchase using my link supports the channel. And another advertisement. Man, I'm advertising too much. Uh, I'm going to be streaming tomorrow if this video comes out at around 3 or 4 p.m. I'll be streaming around 2 on Sunday, 2 p.m. Toronto time on YouTube. Check it out. Showcase stream part 1. It's going to be a long showcase, so uh, yeah, buckle up. But that stream is going to be a fun one. I've got uh, a bunch of stuff set up for it, trying to make it a little more interesting. And if you want to support me with that, then come and check it out. But yeah, don't worry, my last video title was a joke. It's not an RC channel now. Although I will be featuring some more IRL videos this year, that is actually my goal for this year, is to expand out a little bit with IRL stuff, highly edited stuff, um, and also bridge that with my second channel, which is all for project car things. And I have a lot of fun on that channel. <laughs> and I have a lot of fun on this channel too, so I thought I'd mix them together a little bit. But if you like this video, be sure to like it and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Let's crash into something. At maximum velocity, maximum attack. <laughs> Somehow I changed that back to camera and forgot, but here's our damage. Not bad. It's a tough old car.
a first time in a while, it's time to thank those who have chosen to support this channel via the join button. I actually have been meaning to talk about this at the beginning of a video for a while now, but we have three tiers and somebody actually joined the i4 tier. You're not supposed to get a shout out, but uh, thank you, Turbo Crash, and uh, new people as well. So let's go through the V8s. Overlord, QT Bear, Terrier One, J Pope, Davis Heister, The German Dude, Sin Lab, Badger, Baja Blast, Trevor Cousin, Goofy Plays, Phoenix Shark, Nat64, and, uh-oh, new person, uh, <laughs> oh no, uh, Mancini Country? <laughs> Let me know if I pronounced that incorrectly, but thank you, welcome to the V8 tier, I'll see you guys again next time.